Alrighty, part two here of chapter 12 is actually really short. We've got less than 10 slides for this second video, but they're critically important, this information that's given to us in 12.3. It's all about rate laws, also known as rate equations. It's what we call this thing shown down here. Yep. Now these are huge for us and we use them all the time in chapter 12 and a lot of other chapters because they give us a mathematical expression that relates concentration and chemical rate, okay? So it describes the relationship between the rate of a chemical reaction, how fast it's going, and the concentration of the reactants. And we saw in video one that concentration is important, but a rate law tells me how the concentration of each one is important, okay? Because they're not all created equally. And they all follow this same general form, okay? Rate is equal to K, okay? They all have that K, it's called the rate constant. And then every reactant is put in brackets, okay? showing its molar concentration, right? So molar concentration of A, B, and C are my reactants here. If I had D, E, F, however many I would have, they would all be shown. And each reactant concentration is raised to a superscript. Okay? And that's called the order of the reaction. So M, N, P, anything else that would be shown over here would have a superscript as well. Um, and those give me the order of a reaction, which we're going to cover just in a second. Now, there is one situation where a reactant might not appear in the rate law, and that's if it's what's known as zero order, which we'll cover later on, okay? Because anything raised to the power of zero is one, and anything multiplied by one is itself, so it would drop out. So if P had a value of zero, it was zero order, for example, and C to the zero would be one. So that whole thing would drop out of the equation and we wouldn't even show it. Yep. But that's kind of an exception, not the norm. General formula, rate equals K, concentration of reactants, right? That's molar concentration when we see those brackets and each of them has a superscript that represents the order. Yep. And that's all pretty much described right here. What I said verbally before, we've got it on slide 21, right? Those brackets represent molar concentrations, the superscripts, tell us the order, okay? And what that order represents is how the reaction rate changes as the concentration changes, okay? These things have to be determined experimentally. Your reaction order, your superscripts have to be determined experimentally. And, and be careful when you see other things out on the web, okay? That might, see you can, might say you can determine it just by looking at a reaction. That's not true. You have to use something that's called the method of initial rates, which we have here in just a second. Yeah, you have to use experimental data to determine those superscripts. Yep. The molar concentrations are usually positive integers. Yep. Well, molar concentrations, sorry, have to be positive. They don't have to be integers. The superscripts are usually positive integers. Yep. They can sometimes be fractions. They can sometimes be negative. It's not unheard of. It's nothing that you will have in this course, okay? So you can think of it for chem 1560, those have to be positive integers or zero as we just talked about. And this guy here, K is a rate constant, okay? It is specific for the reaction. Every reaction has its own rate constant and it's also determined by temperature and surface area, okay? If you change the temperature, if you change the surface area, you would change the value of K. Let's talk about these a little bit further, what these orders mean and how we determine them. Okay? So rate is equal to K, A to the M, B to the N. Okay? Again, we're typically thinking about these as positive integers and the most common ones we'll see are one and two. Okay? So if M, for example, is one, then I say that the reaction is first order, because this is one, with respect to A doesn't tell me anything about B. If M is one, it's first order with respect to A. If M is two, the reaction is second order with respect to A. If N was two, then the reaction is second order with respect to B. And that's how I describe these things. So you have an order with respect to each reactant. And then you also have something else known as the overall reaction order. Okay? And you get the overall order just by adding up together 
all of the superscripts that you have. Okay? So if M and N were both equal to one, one plus one is two. The reaction would be second order overall. First order with respect to A, first order with respect to B, one plus one is two, second order overall. If M and N were both two, the reaction would be second order with respect to A, second order with respect to B, two plus two, fourth order overall. So here's some more examples to practice that I represent, or I re represent, I recommend you pause the video and describe to yourself what each of them mean. Put this one up top. Remember, right, if it's not shown, it's one, just like a coefficient in a reaction, right? Ones are implied but not shown because anything raised to the one power is itself, right? Five raised to the first power is equal to five. So here I don't see anything. That means it's a one. So this reaction is first order with respect to hydrogen peroxide and first order overall. This reaction is second order with respect to A and second order overall because there's nothing else. This reaction is second order with respect to A first order with respect to B, and third order overall, because two plus one is three. Okay. And again, those superscripts have to be determined experimentally. So to do that, we use something that's called the method of initial rates. I recommend you write that down, know how to do it, 100% gonna be on the test, method of initial rates. Okay. So let's see what that looks like by looking at data from ozone depletion. I'm thinking about the ozone layer. It's a couple of reactions that go together, but we're going to consider how it's affected by the concentration of NO and O3. So how do I do this? How do I do the method of initial rates to determine the order with respect to NO and the order with respect to O3? I'm given four trials, and I actually have more information than I need here. But let's see how we work on this as soon as it will give me my annotating tools here. I know that the rate expression always starts with rate equals K, the rate constant, and then I write the concentration of each of my reactants. So NO here and O3. Now that I have that, I'm on my way, but I have to determine, right, the co or the, sorry, the superscripts for each of them. So let's just call them variables for now. We'll call it NO raised to the X and O3 raised to the Y. Okay. In order to determine the overall rate law, I have to know what X and Y are equal to. And I can get that from the information that's shown to me. And the key thing that you want to do okay, is to pick two trials that are equal to one another okay, in one of the reactant concentrations, because that's what these two columns represent. This is concentration of NO, this is concentration of O3, and then the overall rate. Okay. So I pick two things where the concentration doesn't change between them. Okay. For example, choosing trial one and two works because the concentration of NO stays the same. Con picking three and four would work too because concentration of O3 stays the same. But if I tried to take trial one and trial four together, that would be a lot harder to do because the concentration of NO changes and the concentration of O3 changes. So pick a pair where one of the concentrations stays the same. And you'll see why here. Okay. I'm gonna start with one and two. Let's look at those. Okay. So in that situation now, I'm gonna put trial one, or I'm gonna put trial two on top. Okay. Let's do trial two. Here, rate is equal to K times concentration of NO, which is one, times 10 to the negative six. Yeah. And 
concentration of O3, which is 6 times 10 to the negative 6. And again, we called those variables before x and y. So I put them the same, x and y. And I put that whole thing over the trial one, where rate is equal to k times 1 times 10 to the negative 6. And now for trial one, the concentration of O3 is three times 10 to the negative six. And again, those are raised to the X and to the Y. Okay. So now look at what's left. Okay. With those guys not changing there in the middle, okay, my rate constant is unique to the reaction. So K over K, that's nice because that cancels. One times 10 to the negative six raised to the X. One times 10 to the negative six raised to the X. Now those two cancel each other out. Yeah. And so now I'm just left with those concentrations of O3 raised to the Y. And that right there, those guys canceling out is why I always choose two sets where a concentration stays the same because now I can continue on, right? I've got my trial two on top and I'm just labeling those off the side. So trial two, the rate is 1.32 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that is equal to, goodness, keep getting the wrong one. 6 times 10 to the negative 6 raised to the y. And then I'm putting that over my trial 1, where it is 6.60 times 10 to the negative 5th is equal to 3 times 10 to the negative 6. Oh, wrong symbol there. Problems with zoom. Okay, and again, keeping in mind that both of those are still raised to the Y. Okay. But now what I can do, right, is I can factor out that to the Y power. Okay. So I've got trial two over trial one. And I can factor these out. Okay. And now I divide what's left, okay? 1.32 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fifth, everything on the left-hand side, right, that equals two. And then what's six times 10 to the negative six divided by three times 10 to the negative six? You probably don't even need your calculator for that. It's still two. Okay. Now raising that to the y power, and the only reason, or the only way to solve that, two equals two to the what? Well, y has to be equal to one, meaning that this reaction, y in here, is to the first power. The reaction is first order with respect to ozone. Huh? It's a lot of math. That's how the textbook will show you how to walk through it. As you practice these things, you'll be able to do it a lot quicker, right? You identify what's going on, right? Take three and four here. Okay, O3 stays the same. NO doubles, my rate doubles. That means the reaction's also first order with respect to NO. Yeah, but I recommend you do the math for that one as well. You should get your final answer for the rate expression here. Rate is equal to K. If I can ever hit the right key, right? NO. O3, they are both to the first power. So the reaction is first order with respect to NO, first order with respect to O3, second order overall. Okay. But try that again, everything we just did, try it using three and four to get the respect for NO. Okay. Practice, practice, practice. 
will be the key for these things because I'll guarantee that they're on the test using this method of initial rates. You have to do it in order to determine the orders of reactions. Okay? There are plenty of resources there to practice. You'll have them on your homework as well. Okay, so let's clear those out and carry on here. And I've already said this a million times, right? Rate laws can be determined only by experiment. You have to get those powers, those superscripts from experimental data. You can't do it just by looking at the reaction, okay? So you might see some resources out there that say you can, but there's special criteria that you have to hit for that to be the case. So don't assume, use the method of initial rates to determine these things. So we finished with units. Okay, you have to have units for a reaction, right? We can't just ignore units now that we've gotten to chapter 12. Okay. So what are the units on your rate constant? Okay. Well, at the end of the day, everything has to cancel out. Okay. So you can do one of two things. You can memorize this, okay. or you can just memorize the table down here. These are the units for K. If it's a first order reaction overall, these are overall reaction orders, if it's first order, your units on K are seconds to the negative one. If it's a second order overall, liters per mole per second. Third order overall, moles to the negative two, liters squared, seconds to the negative one. Okay. What these units are doing, in case you blank and forget about it, it's just canceling everything out at the end of the day. Okay. If you're thinking about your overall rate expression, right? It's canceling everything so your final units are molar per second, okay? So we'll annotate this one more time. Right, the final units that you end with should be capital M, right? Molarity per second, okay? Which works out to be liters over moles times Second. Those are the final units you should end up with when you write your overall rate expression. Okay. That's why if it's first order overall, you already have molarity, so you just need the second on the bottom. If it's second order, you need it liters over moles to cancel one of those molarities. And then you need it twice if it's third order, and then it would go on and on from that. So you can remember this formula or the table down below. If you've never seen that inverse exponent right there, a negative exponent, that just means one over something, okay? So seconds to the negative one is equal to one over seconds. Okay. So don't let those negative exponents up here confuse you. It just means one over that thing. Okay? If you had, for example, x to the negative two, it would be equal to one over x squared. So those are the units, pale in comparison to the method of initial rates. That and understanding rate laws are by and large the most important thing from this video, even though we only had less than 10 slides, right? Longer, because I wanna make sure you understand that. Practice, practice, practice the method of initial rates, one of the most important things from chapter 12.